Now for navigation, I wanted the feeling of something going right around the earth. So what I've done is, I've cut a piece of foam. Yeah, you can't see it very well, can you? This is focusing on the background. If that's been cut out of a piece of foam, if I turn it over, you get a better look at it. It's a dirty old bit of foam. And you can actually see it's out of a bit of a box. What I've done is I've cut it out like, you know, here's, here's where it came out of. See that foam's been cut there? It's just been cut with an old knife. Hot wire would, would be better, I guess, but you know, I had an old knife that it's fully used. Cut that out. But I had a bit of a problem in that there was grooves and patches, so what I'm going to do is... So what I do is I get this piece here and we just slot that into the hole like that. See that? See the glue squishing out there? Now when that's dry I'll cut that off, probably six hours. Rounded off the edges of the earth. See how it's rounded? It's ready to go for the earth. Um, what I'll do now is, I'll be filling, filling various areas. You might notice here, you can see that filler there. Just to flatten out that surface so I can paint it. Because pretty soon, I'm going to get a couple of good thick coats of undercoat on it. Might even do that now. We'll see. Coats, had a bit of sand. I love using that old stuff. It's all the more thrill to me that it's made out of old bits and pieces than um, using new things. Recycling's part of the thrill. It's about illusion, really. Using things that aren't any good to make something that's great. Or exciting and wonderful and new.
What on earth? Well, here we go. We're going to make the whole world this morning. There's the curve. What I need to do is make it look three-dimensional. Look, one of the ones I've done already didn't work out because it's flat. Look at that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to build it up. Also, the pie shape was wrong. See how it's like a pizza slice? It needs to be squarer. So what I'm doing over here is I'm just starting to build it up again. So what I'll be doing is piling things up and carving into it. So you start just by stacking the foam informally. I find if I cut it and then bend it, it cuts much better. See that? got the hot glue gun which is kind of inappropriate because the hot glue gun I wonder if you can guess what the problem is well I can actually show you look see it melts the foam great not ideal Once again, it's important to my project that I recycle, so I love this idea. I love this idea So I'm starting to build up that planet, see that? The different layers is like a cake, isn't it? I'm actually cutting it like a cake because I'm using the electric knife. Another slice of cake, madam. I've got a bit of a joke that goes, um, um, count your fingers before you start. Now fill in the wedding cake with the icing, more or less anyway. I haven't done the top yet, but what I'll do is, because I have to stop for a moment, I'll fill this up so I can um, let it dry and I'll be able to fix it when I get back to the task. Because what I want to do is I just want to fill in the large hole so I can use body filler for the rest. This stuff is incredibly heavy. The foam is incredibly light. This filler is incredibly, incredibly heavy. It's an amazing thing. I don't know what it is, but there you go. It's very dense. Not as a tube, but um, once I fill up a sculpture, it starts feeling really light. Even when I'm just filling cracks, if I do it two or three times, suddenly it becomes really heavy. So, um... Relative densities are amazing. Shame I can't keep it that light, really. Well, I guess you could if I push the foam together a bit more closely, I might be able to do that. Oop. Because I want to top fill it in a minute. And then once the... um. 
silicon kits dry, what I do is I top fill with um with body filler, a fine a fine grain filler. But that's got to be dry first. It takes quite a while because the density there's quite a lot of it. So and this makes it heavy too, which is a shame. But there you go. So I'll just be filling areas where there's no silicon at the moment so that it too can dry and I'll be able to use files and, and a surf form to cut it back. So what I'm looking for now is patches where there's not much oh, silicon and there's not much of that. So this should be, you know, should be good in the end. It's a bit hard to see actually. It's a bit hard to get a good grip on, but it's getting better. So there's the um, there's the final shape. It's been smoothed off. Look how it's built up from inside. But let me look at it from the correct way. It's going to be wonderful. So what we'll do is we'll just fill in those gaps again. It's important that I use this sort of stuff. I might just get a vacuum cleaner on to it. I might have to vacuum here anyway. Well, there's a finger for the scale. That aircraft's complete. You can actually see now all the pieces that it's made up out of. Balsa wood. Acetate. And there's a piece of hardwood up here for the tail plane because I couldn't get balsa wood to do it without chipping. But that's ready to paint now. I'll paint that now. Here's the globe. Well, what's going to happen is, of course, we're going to be seeing it like this. Okay, so kind of like about that. Okay, let's have a look at painting. All I need to do is put a nice thick coat of white paint over it at the moment. It's not going to look good because the wood goes really hairy. Nice thick coat of white paint. And that'll be sanded. But the white, acts, this paint is great because it acts like a filler. Which is very handy. It gives it a good smooth surface. But all I need to do is get a good coat over it at the moment. And um, I'll let that dry. Probably put two coats on it and then I'll start to sand it.
So see that it just becomes something totally different as those pieces come together. Totally different. I love it. Very rewarding. And what we might do is just take another coat of paint over the top of the earth. Oh, it's so cool. Bit of water. This is a different effect now. What I'm going to do now is just going to rub it down a bit, smooth it out. Oh, a bit too much. A bit rugged. Oh well. Right, better leave that. That didn't work. See that?
Okay, there you go. Um, done the anti-tip jet. I've just got to clean up the type now. And that will be right down there, plying its way across the earth. Kind of neat, isn't it? Let's have a look, see if we can get into it a bit. see the earth where's our plane there's our plane winging along excellent Well, here's one I thought that was going to be easy. Look at this. Here's the F-18. I've got to... Um, I've got to create that. Now, I've got the body. Just pan right out. Now, I've got the fuselage canopy. Next thing I'll be doing is applying the canopy piece. Here's a plan of an FA-18. Here's the moulded canopy and that will be the thing. It's the bit that will be going on here and we'll be cutting that out. So what I'll do is, I'll get this canopy, I'll stick it over here and I'll cut around the canopy shape so I can get it to mate onto the wooden buck. So I need a knife. Which I happen to have over here. And what I'll do is I'll try and cut that canopy out. Got here, you can see um, the three pieces of the hull, the engine scoops, the nose, the cockpit. And we're going to do the tail plane. So there's lots of filler in there. So what I'm trying to do now is get this smoothed out. I actually need a very fine, much finer sandpaper here. It's cracked up a bit here. Now, I've cut a tailplane. I just need to figure out how big 
I need these tail planes. I can't get them in the right position. You can see on the back I've scored in a number of lines. And I've got a wing just to show you. It's a pattern wing. But it's the wrong shape. It's too big. Probably needs to be about that big. It doesn't matter much about this one. I'm just having a look at it. I'm thinking it needs to be that big. The wings are quite small on these F-A-18s. So I just keep chipping away at it. What I did want to do is get that cockpit off. I don't know if I'll be able to do it because I've put the filler in it now. Now it's best thing I could do. So I've blown the canopy over this section before I stuck on the strakes, these side bits. But this canopy is ideal now because it was blown over the top of this, moulded over the top. I can use this. Now I'm going to have to build an interior, but the, you get the idea, don't you? That was looking pretty good. The nose still isn't long enough. It's better.
tail was too short, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick on another, um, just to fill it to extend the tail a bit. I've got to make sure it's bigger and push it on tight. Shouldn't have drawn them, I'll squeeze it out. It's looking cool. Now I just have to decide how much of the cockpit detail I'm going to put in. It's a bit hard to know. It's got to be simple. Okay, so um, that's on the back. So you trim it down. Oh, it's all very fragile. It'd been better if the tail planes weren't on. It doesn't carve well, of course, because it's um. It carves easier this way than it does into the end grain. So what I'll do is I'll just extend these jet pipes like that as best I can. Actually it'll probably work better with sandpaper on this case. Try not to carve towards your fingers. Uh, you've only got, um, count them, how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, I don't know. You've only got so many fingers. And um, the worst thing about model making when I was young was I always used to uh, forget what I was doing and do this. Thumbs here. <coughs> Put all the pressure in, straight into the thumb. Good thing about being old is getting just a tad wiser. It's not because um I don't think it's the pain thing. It's just that you know that it's going to stop you from finishing, stop you from finishing your task. We just get the wings on here. Now what I need to do now is, um, I'll be trimming down these things, which you probably don't recognise, but they're going to be um, the afterburners. Here's the bit I really love. All those little lumps are becoming a coherent whole. It's starting to look like a thing. I've got those wings on. I've added the strakes, which are those things on the back of the... Um, vertical stabiliser. I've got a pilot in there. He's just a lump of white stuff. But that's enough. It'll be enough when I paint him to work fine. See how it's silhouette starting to work? I've got the tail plane on. I'm just going to show you filling up the tail plane. Um, now this stuff is made for repairing ceiling cracks. Or wall cracks. I'm just using little bits of it and you can't sand it which is interesting because the general technique is in this sort of work is overfill and then sand until it's smooth. Now in this case what I want is I need a good gummy it's a bit of a hole there between the stabilizer can you see oh it's not gonna stick. All right we'll just um
So I get the um, horizontal stabilizers on. I've got the vertical stabilizers. Whoa, bonk. Total crash. Oh, it's a bit weird. Seems smaller than the other one. Did you hear me muttering there? It seems smaller than the other one. Lots of red texture there. I'm hoping that will all wash away in a minute. I've only got one afterburner on. Process is a bit, bit tricky because what I use is I use a huge paper cone like that and I cut it down, which is um, a bit of a drag actually. This one's filthy. So what I do is I sort of measure the width of the tailpipe, transfer that over onto the, um, the cone, and then I'll cut that down with a nice sharp knife, hopefully. Hopefully a nice sharp knife. Remember, this is just paper. I've just put a bit of um, PVA on it. Maybe it's called white glue. Normally it's a wood glue. Sometimes it's used in craft a lot and people use it in schools on paper because it doesn't buckle the paper as much as clags. Water-based. There's the afterburner, the paper cone. What I'll do is I'll put a good lot of white glue on it. I was just thinking I was cutting the end of the um, jet pipes out with my surgical scissors and I thought, gee, I couldn't do it without these scissors because I can cut right around really fine shapes. And I was thinking they're a cut above the rest, an absolute cut above the rest. Now, what I need to do is just rotate this until it fits in line with the other one. Now I'll show you why those surgical scissors are so good. You watch this. This piece of the horizontal stabiliser sticks out too far. There's no other pair of scissors I could get in there to cut it except this. They will cut that bit off, amazing. I just love them. That means I can get the jet pipe up there, I can get the afterburner in and get it to sit straight. You can see it's too long, I'll cut that off later, but the angle's fine now. Position's good. Oh, you can see it at the back, it's too small. That looks cool. Okay, way to go. probably noticed my breathing I find I've found since I've been doing this I often hold my breath when I'm painting so I don't make mistakes so if you're listening to the soundtrack you'll find um, often when I've finished a task I'll just go 
I'm just not letting my breath out. It's okay now. You can breathe again. It's weird. Weird stuff, Mr. Magoo. The funny thing is, you know what? When I think about this stuff, I'm not as mad about war, but I am mad about... These things have the most extraordinary animal shapes. I've probably mentioned that before. They're so lithe and, and athletic. Wonderful shapes. And they're so full of interesting ideas. You know, like the ejection seats to save pilots and the explosive cord in the canopies. There's a piece of snaking explosive cord that goes through the canopy because the seat comes out at such enormous force that canopy's got to be well gone before anybody comes out of there. Seen some horrible pictures of a pilot that had ejected prematurely. Oh well he didn't mean to eject at all. The plane had taken off and it ejected and the canopy was still in place. He went through the canopy. I thought that was just, just horrible. But I'd like to know what sort of, how many people have been saved by ejection seats. They say it's the most horrible experience because it's so violent. The force of it's so incredible. I remember seeing um, one of the American fighter pilots at Avalon I swear to you, he looked 21. Young man with this incredible aircraft. Well, that could destroy all sorts of things. He's probably flown missions. Okay, let's see how it looks in light grey. Might have to have a couple of shots at this. I just want to have a look at it. It'll show me, I'm not sure about the condition of the um, bodywork. I don't think I've sanded it very well. Actually, I think I'm using the wrong brush. I need a much thicker brush. Really want to lay it on thick. Yeah, it's got to be much lighter, but that's okay. I'll put a light. Just need to see the um. See where I've gone wrong, basically. Really hard to do now because everything's gone to low visibility color schemes, which means it's all grey. Variations of grey. Light, light, light grey. Graphically not as interesting. I mean, I just love painting different tones and hues and stripes. I guess it's another thing about that, the relationship between aircraft and, nat and natural things, that sometimes they really do get that celebrational coat, just like an animal might have. One of these coats I'll put in some varnish. Top coat, I'll just have a look at it first. Oop, don't forget those stabilizers. It's pretty nice though. It's a real treat. It's been something I've always wanted to do, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. 
going backwards to go forwards. Just paint it in the cockpit. See how it starts to come together? When that one colour goes over it, it starts to pull together. I love that feeling of it just suddenly becoming one thing. So all, all those different bits that we've pulled together. Pieces of an old piece of typing paper. Piece of plastic squished out of um, my silicon tube. An old... Um, computer, no it was a phone cord piece of packaging for the cockpit and the wings put a phone extension that's what's made this whole wing and side section the plastic packaging off the phone extension we have to make recycling work because otherwise we're just going to keep producing things that will stay around forever. I find that terrible. That that's what our legacy will be. I love the fact that these rear nozzles are made from um, paper. Paper's the best stuff. It's just wood, flat wood really, isn't it? If you think about it. But it really, God, it's fantastic because you can, you can trim it, you can shape it. I'm just finishing off the paint job now. What you can see is, you can see some detail on it. Some of the panel surface, low visibility markings. What I'm just doing now is just on the... Um, you have to water the paint down incredibly to get... On such a small model, you really have to water everything down otherwise your lines just come out too thick. I'm just going to clean up these afterburners. It's a huge difference, isn't it, between what we had before.
Now just making some clouds, what I'm doing is I'm going to start trying to set up a bank of clouds. So what I'll do is I'll mix them up at different heights. And the way I'm doing it is I've kept some foam from the past sculpture. What I'm doing is I'm kind of curving it, which is too flat there. So what I'll start doing is I'll start sticking it together like that. Try it with the hot glue gun. I don't know exactly how it's going to go at this stage, I'm just trying this stuff out. There's a problem with this stuff, you never know exactly from beforehand. So you get the idea. See how I've made him out of little transparent pieces? It's tiny, isn't it? It's absolutely tiny. But these are um, these represent the small things flying across the earth. They are small things. Pa people made enormous journeys in these very small planes. Across continents, across oceans. Bert Hinkler, in 1928, went did the first solo flight from um, England to Australia in this thing. It's just incredible. Man was amazing. And that's what she could be doing. Okay, now we're just going to do the um, the characteristic part of Bert Hinkler's avian was the green upper fuselage. I really should be putting a pencil line in first, but I'm kind of trusting. Now, anybody who knows aircraft would know this is Bert Hinkler's plane. 
and um, what we'll do next is we'll apply also not just the green we'll make sure that the um, registration letters are clear on it needed to do this because Hinkler was Hinkler is the embodiment of the spirit of the golden age of flying because he was just a chap who did things on his own quietly skillfully a great role model that little engine in there well it's not an engine it's a block of plastic isn't it just the idea got our block of plastic in there now the next thing is and I love this bit this is my favorite bit well, it depends if it works or not love that bit just love it so this is more or less the idea the aircraft making their way across the planet in their various ways with the electronics oops with radar beacons and with just standard navigation Let's just zoom in and have a look. I'll just put this back down where it belongs. That's less interesting. Wait. Let's have a look at um, Bert Hinkler's plane. Bert Hinkler flew all the way from England to Australia in 1928 solo. That's to say on his own. What an achievement. Give it a look at it. That's tiny, isn't it? That's better. That so looks pretty good. Change the attitude of it. So that'll be skimming across the earth like that good but um let's just zoom back out again that jet looks good too get it quite high couldn't i you can see how tiny it is can't you i mean it's just ridiculous tiny tiny little thing see the little guy in there wheels are probably too big Get it over something like that. Can you imagine this little thing flying all the way across that earth? Yeah, good stuff. Anyway, okay, we'll leave it there. That's done. Not every day you get a chance to paint Australia. So much to learn though, gosh. Don't realise how watery this has to be to sort of mix. 
got a red here, it's just so bright, but I know that Australia looks red from the air. Watch, look at that. Whoa. Get your attention, wouldn't it? Because it's got the underlay of green too. What I do like about it is the way that the um, the fillers picked stuff up. Water. You see my hand darting across there. Just putting a lot of water with it. Just to have a look at it. Quite like that colour though. It's good. Just got to make sure I don't blend it all. I'm finding I'm blending everything, so it's equally bland. But um, I just have to make sure there's not too much impasto, especially from that height, because the blending effect would be extreme. So. Not bad. Pretty good bit of Aussie. I kind of wiped the paint in there. Can you see that? Much more than I actually painted, but having that undercoat is fantastic. I don't know what to do without that white undercoat. It's been such a major part of the project. Of course, this isn't this isn't really what you'd see, and of course, it's much too close. I do know all that. Just like that idea of red Australia. It's pretty good. good better than I thought it would be I've got some blue here it's not being very cooperative let's try that is that going to work it's not is it it's too light let's make it darker Really nice. I mean, it's not real, but it's nice. If you've ever been in doubt about Australia and logging, all you have to do is fly above it and you see how little of it is left. Visiting schools throughout Victoria, it's just amazing. When you go and have a look, God, there's just nothing left of it. It's little strips of it, little patches. It's bizarre, very bizarre. And yet, people become incensed when you talk about that. Australia's a very dry place. Don't have the money for him. Water, as always. 
That looks pretty good. I want to just thin this down, that's too much. Get some yellow back into there. give that sort of halo of atmosphere sort of trick so something like this look what if that'll work that's it That. that should look good. Pretty convincing. So I've got this. I've also got this. So I want to have that. I want to have this. Actually, have both up in the sky. Well, it should do the trick anyway. Got some clouds happening here, up here, and we've got some tips of clouds here. Now if we zoom in you might be able to see what's happening there. I've got them on beams, that looks great. See that camera's a help. It's a bit of a problem here, you can see that. It's not, not good. Oh, isn't that wonderful? God, it looks so real. I've got that, so um, let me see if I can sh let's get right into it and have a look at it. You can see the foam and the little struts holding things up. And the cloud sticking up, so it's pretty basic, isn't it? Let's get back there. What I'm going to do now is try and lift the globe. Oh, is that great? Put it in, pick it up, there we go, yeah it's fantastic, just got to work out the storm clouds now which is worrying me, but um, what I'm going to do now is, now what I'll be doing now is I'll just be tipping that over, I'll be getting some feet under here so I can change the attitude of it, so first thing I'll do is I'll get this dowel, and I'll be putting the posts in at the base. So I'll be applying those to the bottom, just drilling some holes and sorting that out. So I'll just get the earth to turn around and I'll get the last of these feet under here because it's sort of tipping back now. So the last foot here will be mounted under that piece of foam there. I'll straighten it up because I want a really, really strong base. I need it at the correct angle. I love this world. Love this world. <laughs> love this world. So what I'll do is I'll just get um, the hot glue gun. Make sure I've got a good squishy glue. This is not a good construction, but what I'll do is I'll put a couple of struts in. I'll show you as I'm going. I need to um I need to speed things up, so I'll be going for some um a few sort of shortcuts. Can you see that? So that's going in under the um it's going in there. Now just let me let let that settle for a moment. 
and I'll show you how I'm going to support it. I'll turn it around. Now it's going to drop out, isn't it? See, like this. See how it's a weak construction? There's nothing to support it. But we'll be doing more than that. What we'll do is we'll get a piece of foam core. I love this foam core board. It's been a lifesaver for me. Speeds things up. It's great stuff. Great stuff. Um, so see this, what I'll do is I'll get this under here. I'll glue that in there. So I get a top support that needs to have some something to, to lend it against and I'll put a triangulation in it. So I'll put a fillet in there. See that bit there? That's exactly where it needs to go. slow try and triangulate everything because there's a long beam there I'll be looking to put something in there too which is that's a good start Now I'll get those into the baseboard because I don't want it to squirm around. What I'll do is I'll mark those places because I want to have that firmly lodged. Mark out all the points. Get rid of the globe for a moment. Take that away. Now I'll take the other piece of... Oh. Sorry, the cricket's on. Can't go without the cricket. Australia and England. And if I think about this whole, the whole start of this aviation history, um, Australia and England are the principal factors. Journey between Australian pilots going to England, Mother England, Australian pilots flying back to Australia from England across the world. It must have occurred to them at that stage how far away, how far away Australia is. Of course I've done the, the dirty trick on the globe. I've turned Australia up so that it's like, um, you know, the top of the earth. But that's what you see in America all the time. God, they turn that map of theirs around. I haven't chipped the tip. Okay, so that's the idea. I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll see how I'm digging them out. I just need a footing. So I've got what... I've got a glue stick, but not, not actually think of a glue stick. What I'm doing is I'm putting glue in the holes with my glue stick, this one. And now what I'll do is I'll settle these guys down into that. So what I'll do is I'll just wiggle them around a bit. Here comes the earth. Now I just put a bit of pressure in those holes because that's a good thing about foam core board, it compresses. So I'll leave that. Good stuff. So I've secured the earth. And if you have a look, I've started, um, I've supported it to the background with struts. Now look what I've done here on the foreground. I've just started sticking some panelling over the edge so I can mount the clouds. So what I've got is I've got a box sort of. I might be sticking another piece down down here too. I just want a nice neutral ground for it. So what I'll do now is I'll be mounting I'll be mounting the, the clouds up along here. Large. But the shot, you can see the shot starting to work, isn't it? Like it's in there. Cloud sort of dusting up in the distance, beautiful. So what I'm doing is I'm just breaking this foam up. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. 
and I think we're just gonna have to go with this because it's gonna be fine my worry was that it's just a bit too solid it's not breaking up enough so what I have to do now I'll go and get some more glue in a minute I'm running out of hot glue hot glue is terrible to use with this stuff because it melts it so it takes it a while to settle down oh that was off so I'll just get that in, slide it into place. What I'm trying to do is just get overlap. I don't mind, I can paint under that edge. If it doesn't work, if that edge is too hard, what I'll do is I'm gonna paint cloud under there, but I think I have to have a look at the top cover first. I was thinking, this one's really held me up, I've gotta say. I'm not feeling confident about this one at all, which is slowing me down tremendously. So, um. Now this is starting to look good. I was really worried about this. God, I was worried about this. I just didn't have anything to stage it with. So like once I've got this framework up, see the black frame, I can start making the clouds. It's starting to work. Like if I pull it round, you'll probably see the edge, edge is too hard, but I might feather that. So then we've got our cloud build up and our light source is worked out here. So all I need to do now is zoom out and show you um, how that's coming together. Look at that, foam, foam, foam. I just moved down there, I could probably show you um, how that stuff's going with the hot glue gun, which I have to plug in. Let's have a quick look at that. It's difficult because the foam is um, three-dimensional, means that things have to go in. Like I'm starting to stick things on here because I don't just want this axis where I've carved in there a bit. I need to have things sticking out so I get these sorts of S-shaped ridges through the clouds which is important for cloud shapes. You can see these flats, I'm trying to avoid those flat areas. But we'll see that as we go on. But it's um, a lovely picture, it's turning into an absolutely brilliant picture. So the FA18 will be around there or there. I don't know, I'll just find the best attitude of it. Let's try flipping it around. Maybe it's better like that. That's a nice view, just rising up into that. Of the cloud, I actually wanted it coming out of the cloud, but I think that might do it. Just filling up that foreground, you can see that cloud starting to come around, it's looking good. I'll just keep going here. It's like popcorn. Making, making popcorn. This is a wonderful stage. This has taken a great deal of trouble. I've had a great deal of trouble getting these clouds. But I love this bit because it's just really just getting the last bits. Working on the shadows. See these beautiful shadows in here? Beautiful. There's a flat bit there. But I can't have it too high. So what I might do is just um, try and get some kind of another bit of popcorn in there. Yeah, see that's not bad. Yeah, it's popcorn filming. I love it. Let's try that. Nothing there, is there? Hang on, just wait. It's coming back. Put the popcorn in. That's a beautiful sight. Gosh, that looks good. That still, that looks like a German helmet there. I think we might have to just do something about that.
trying to lose that German helmet feel. It's still not good. The other ones are wonderful. I look at this one here. I think I'll stick another one up the top because I really want some um, elevation there. Like this is a cumulus. Oh, fantastic. I'd really like to have something coming out of there. Let's have a look at it. Now I'm just moving the popcorn around. See how that's just a bit round? I think I'll just take that, stick that right on top of there. I want some stretch here. I want something for the planes to fly between. And let's stick something right up there. Let's get that to really rise up. Like those amazing clouds do. You're not, looking, you're not seeing anything out of here, but what I want is I want a bit more extension here. See how you have to soften those outlines? If it's a lump, I've got another lump there, but I think I'll leave that. This is beautiful through here. That's sort of just starting to sort of fizz across. I'm missing a bit there, but that's pretty good. I've got a patch down here. I could actually use something there. I'm not happy up here. I don't like those streaks. I don't know, maybe it needs a bit more height. Just try a small bit there, see what happens. That oh, might help. Well, let's just stick it in there. Why not? And the biggest bit, just get that to rise a bit. I also like the idea of having a bit over on the horizon there. A bit back there. And yeah, it's pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know where that's going. I don't know. I've got to find the best angle for it. I'd like it amongst the clouds. I'd like the avian. I'd like to see the um, serial numbers of it. Down the front. God, you can't see it. So that little guy's going to be flying around there. Somewhere. 